Regardless of the context, you have almost certainly heard of the United Nations, but their purpose on the world stage might seem somewhat enigmatic. Are they a kind of central global government? Are they the world's police force? Are they a kind of world parliament? Are they the doing of the lizard people themselves? Who even knows? Well, actually, I did just write an entire video to explain it all, so I guess I do? The United Nations, or UN, is, to at least clarify some things, an intergovernmental organization created to foster international cooperation and collaboration. Founded in 1945, shortly before the end of World War II, the UN was essentially the second try to the League of Nations, another intergovernmental organization meant to preserve and maintain international peace after World War I, which completely fell on its face and was disbanded in 1946. The UN first consisted of its Permanent Security Council nations, nowadays informally known as the Big Five, as well as 46 other countries, that number growing to eventually encompass basically every sovereign country in the world. In fact, unless you want to be like Vatican City, membership of the UN is, while not a true formal requirement for nationhood, nonetheless something prospective independence movements generally strive for. The UN now consists of 193 member nations and two observer states, those of course being the Holy See and the State of Palestine. Alright, that's all well and dandy, but what does it do, exactly? Is it some kind of attempt at a one-world government, or something like that? Not exactly. Perhaps the best way of seeing the UN is as a kind of international forum, where international laws can be passed, international disputes and issues brought into the light for the community at large to weigh in on, and violations of international law be efficiently dealt with. The main responsibilities of the UN are not to govern the world like the US governs its states, or even like the EU governs its constituent countries, but to form some sort of international framework to tackle international issues, those including everything from wars and deadly conflicts, to climate change, to food production, to sustainable development, even to the current coronavirus pandemic. The UN's organization is split up into six different principal organs, the Security Council, the General Assembly, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the International Court of Justice, and the UN Secretariat. Also well known are the UN peacekeepers, generally consisting of troops contributed by member nations, who are often sent in to control and mediate conflicts in especially war-torn areas. The Security Council plays a big role in the UN's governance, especially from its five permanent members, originally made up of the US, the UK, the France, the Soviet Union, and the Republic of China, with China having been replaced by its communist counterpart, and the Soviet Union later by its non-communist counterpart. These five nations hold great sway over the politics of the UN, mainly in veto power. They, however, are also joined by a rotating list of 10 other members, somewhat better representing the different regions of the world. The General Assembly is also a big part of the UN, as it is the collection of all its member nations. Basically, whenever you see speeches and debates from the huge golden brown room with all the nations put together, yeah, that is the General Assembly. While the Security Council holds veto power over bills and prospective new members, it is the General Assembly which votes these motions into being, along with budgets, suggestions to the Security Council, and new Secretaries General. The current Secretary General is Portugal's Antonio Guterres, which basically leads the United Nations as an organization. Basically, think of the General Assembly and the Security Council as kind of a legislative branch, and thus the Secretariat as the executive branch. You can also think of the International Court of Justice as a kind of judicial branch, as it deals with international laws and disputes between its members. The ECOSOC deals with economic and social cooperation, and is made up of 54 member states serving staggered three-year terms. Finally, there's also the UN Trusteeship Council, for managing colonial possessions and trusteeships, but which has actually been inactive since 1994. The UN also has numerous special agencies working different purposes in the international community, 
some of the most notable including the Food and Agriculture Organization, the International Civil Aviation Organization, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, the International Labor Organization, the International Maritime Organization, the International House of Pancakes, International Monetary Fund, International Telecommunication Union, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, the World Health Organization, Universal Postal Union, and the World Bank Group as well as other similar organizations like the World Trade Organization. These organizations all have important jobs in coordinating particular things nations have to do together. For example, the FAO leads international efforts to end world hunger, among many other things. The ICAO regulates how airports work, so planes can actually land there without any sort of drama, among others. The IMF fosters global monetary cooperation for a stable economy, as with a lot of other things. And UNESCO is perhaps most famous for their World Heritage Sites, but they're mainly there to lead global cooperation through science and cultural education, as well as a lot of other stuff. Perhaps largely due to how it is structured, the UN has received loads of criticism over the decades for being largely ineffective in certain situations. Without it though, world diplomacy would still likely be quite a bit of a free-for-all. And since world leaders are, surprise surprise, Human, world leaders, have often been known in the past to act out of what can be described as petty reasons. My god, I can only imagine what that must have been like. Hey, did I hear talk about petty international disputes? Spaghetti Road? Why, yes, yeah, wh why do you ask? Because I made a whole video about petty international disputes over on my channel, in collaboration with Kanubis on this video. Oh, that's right, yeah, of course. So if you want to see some historical examples of things that nations and world leaders have did for incredibly petty reasons, be sure to go to Spaghetti Road's channel after this video is over. In fact, actually this video is just about over right now. Seriously, you can leave now. Or you can stay and watch the end screen to see which country is holding the sign of this video. Hey Malaysia, what message do we have for everyone this week? Ah yes, definitely follow me on Twitter and Instagram. But maybe if you happen to have just stumbled upon this channel, do be sure to like, share, comment, all the other YouTuber stuff, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.